श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुर वी आर फिक्स अवर जी पी एस डेस्टिनेशन body disidentification is the first goal in meditation don't have that kind of imagination i hope i see god today you will not see so let us go systematically body disidentification is the first thing to be achieved on the spiritual path otherwise if you do your spiritual practice keeping prakriti or body as the main item then your sadhana will be is there any technique to do kaya kalpa okay. one person asked me this question uh, samachi do you know kaya kalpa i said yes oh good can you teach me i said you are not the body you are the pure consciousness not from that All those who are descendants of Virendra Kashyapu, they want to kaya kalpa. A poor man wants to maintain old clothes for many years. A rich man throws them away. See? So, first goal is body disidentification. Yesterday we have seen. Now today we see another approach with proper understanding. see body and mind they are together by the glue of the pranam my kosha the three of them small finger is the gross body and big finger is the mind one of my kosha they are held together because of this pranam my kosha Now, if we can control this pranamaya kosha, then the grip between mind and the body becomes weak, and then it is easier to peel off without damage. See? Well, like you know, when we fix a stamp on an envelope, and then we come to realize that it was a wrong envelope. then if you peel it off forcibly the stamp will be spoiled so we give the stamp with the envelope the jala samadhi then this glue gets diluted or weakened and you can peel off without damaging the stamp exactly the same way when we practice pranayam keeping this in view then the pranayam is useful step number 1 about pranayam number 2 <coughs> we keep on eating whole day as a result there are three things happen inside our body part of the food goes in the development of the tissues part of it goes for providing energy <coughs> and part of it is thrown out of the body as unwanted metabolic by products these metabolic by products are again of three types solids liquids and gases the solids and liquids go through the urination and defecation etc no problem but these toxins which are produced in the form of the gases now these gases are not the gas emissions these toxins keep on accumulating in our blood stream and the blood gets saturated with these toxins and these toxins are responsible for making the mind throw vomit continuously a number of thoughts because there is no reason why should we have thoughts when you don't want i don't want to think again some thought will come now who is that 
So it is these gaseous toxins in the blood, they act as a stimulus for the mind. And therefore the thoughts come. So when we practice pranayama properly, these toxins are thrown out of the system. So like we have to go daily to the toilet, we have to go daily two, three times, four times to the urination. In the same manner, we have to clean these toxins. Patanjali doesn't talk about it. This thing comes only in Vashishta Samhita and Yagya Valke Smriti. There this topic comes. So, this is called as Nadi Shodhanam. The cleansing of these gaseous toxins. And it is for this purpose pranayama is done. Now the third thing. Normally we breathe without much awareness and therefore this cleansing process doesn't happen. Like normally we eat without awareness and therefore we keep on putting fat. And then we are worried why my weight is increasing. So we have to cleanse it. And that cleansing happens when we do deep breathing. See? Normally when we breathe casually, only the upper layer of the lung tissues are exchanging the oxygen and these toxins. But when we do deep breathing, either you do it by anulom vilom or simple way, deep breathe in, and deep breathe out. When this is done for some time, maybe 10, 20 times, then what happens is our system starts getting purified. Toxins are removed. And when these toxins are removed, you start feeling extremely light. And there is no disturbance of any kind. Then you can take this mind for further um, operation so that we are free from the impact of the mind on ourselves. Body identification will disappear. So this is the technique. So <clears throat> when we deep breathe in, then a lot of oxygen is available and its toxins are thrown out. Then breathe out. In that breathing out, toxins are out of the system. And then again we breathe in, again the oxygen is supplied. So when we do it for a few times, this happens without any special efforts. We are not interested in Health as the main criteria. Health will happen. See? We are all factory products perfectly made by God. But we keep on doing so many things. Because free download. And then our machine hangs up. I don't know why it is not working. Don't overdo. Everybody has a separate requirement. According to that it is done. But because somebody does, we also do and then suffer. I remember there is a friend of mine, he used to always tell me, you should do pranayama, you should do yoga. I said, look here, you do on my behalf. I cannot do. Because the moment you start doing it, body identification becomes stronger and stronger. All the sadhana is, I can sit straight, I can do this asana, do that asana. I say, I won't do it. So he used to say, I feel pity on you, you know, you should not, you should learn this thing, the most important, the, all the great rishis, everything did. I said, I am not a rishi. I don't want to do it. He did it. Now he is also almost my age or maybe a little smaller. You name a disease, he has it. Spondylosis, back pain, uh, perineal, uh, you know, sardi. 
Anything you say, he has a problem. So he was asking me once, hey, why this is happening to me? I had done so much of yoga and everything. I said, because of that it happened. I told you that time, don't do. Little bit is enough. So, when we practice this pranayam, we will be slowly getting rid of the toxins and then the mind is free. So, do it for few moments. I will tell you first how to do that. You are all yogis, I know. But this thing which has helped me, I am telling you. First, breathe out by squeezing your stomach inside upward and then breathe in first in the stomach then in the chest breathe out first from the chest and then from the stomach again breathe in and upwards do it about five six times what we have to remember is the Time taken for breathing in and out should be approximately same. Don't count. In pranayam they say 1, 4, 16. If you count, you are creating mind. We don't want to create mind. We want to dissolve the mind. When we count 1, 2, 3, 4, mind is created. When you start chanting Lord's name, Ram, 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 mind is created. We have to dissolve the mind. For that, now try. When I stop, you also stop.
Now breathe normally. And you can now breathe out of the body without much efforts. You can observe there are so many bodies in this hall. One is what we claim to be ours. So some observations. The base of our body has become form. Vertically the body has become steady. The weight of the body has increased on the base. Oh, just remain. Aware of the breathing that is happening. Breathing is not done, it happens. <coughs> In awareness, there is no doer. So, initially, we are just aware of breathing. Instead of remaining aware, remain indifferent.
the shape and the form of the body has become hazy. Therefore, the concept of in and out disappears. Here we alert that you don't talk to yourself.
as the mind is approaching its death, the mind sends some images, some thoughts, some memories. and thereby again consolidates its existence. Remain absolutely indifferent to any thought, any vision, any sound. Do not fight with the mind.
breathing <coughs> breathing is happening life is expressing in the body and this is a common phenomenon bodies may appear to be many but the life is one <coughs> there is no place for individuality like in deep sleep there are no differences there is only one deep sleep for the whole creation similarly there is one mind the differences happen because of body identification as the gross space utakash is not influenced by its contents so also the chittakash is not influenced by the thoughts being akashavat it is infinite no shape no form no name no beginning no middle no end by this understanding when thoughts disappear we come to realize that chitta kasha is essentially chidakash waking dream deep sleep samadhi they don't make any difference
When this goal is clear, body disidentification, then all other experiences that come on the way to reaching the goal, they must be overlooked. To continue to practice this mode of attainment of body disidentification is we react minimum to the world. Because this world is real, only with body identification. And if this is reduced, to that extent we change our reaction intensities. When you take deep breath in once or twice, very clearly experience again the body and the mind have become one. The body shape has come. When you move your toes and fingers, it is now complete. I resides in this body and you resides in other bodies. The samsara begins. With this understanding, when we live throughout the day, then this practice is meaningful. Otherwise, that is as it happens in most of the cases, half an hour meditation, the rest of the day frustration. This should not happen. Om. Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om